DiTucci, editor at large at Tech Target. I have the pleasure today of speaking with Bryson Kaler. Mr. Kaler is the Chief Technology Officer at Equifax, a credit reporting agency. He was hired in 2018, not long after Equifax's massive data breach. He came from IBM, where he was the CTO at IBM Watson and IBM Cloud, bringing with him expertise in artificial intelligence as well as the cloud. Before that, he held IT executive positions at the Weather Channel Companies and Intercontinental Hotels Group. Since joining Equifax, he's been immersed in the company's $1.5 billion investment in digital transformation, a journey he talked about at the recent MIT Sloan CIO Symposium, where he was honored as one of the finalists for the 2021 CIO Leadership Award and was a featured speaker. Welcome, Bryson. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, Linda. It's great to be here. It's great to see you. I want to talk a little bit about the role of the top IT executive, uh, the CIO role, the CTO role. Did you see your role change at all during the uh, pandemic? Yeah, I, I think it did. I think that people uh, really looked to the technology team to help kind of lead the way, frankly, on, on this way of working. Because I think in many cases, the technology teams were further along in remote work with diverse and dispersed teams. Um, you know, we're used to having teams around the world. We're used to people being remote. Um, not all parts of the company, you know, had that culture. Um, you know, one of the things that I said almost on day one to the senior leadership team at Equifax was all of you need to take a part in having a camera on culture. Because as we went from, you know, voice being kind of the norm, even though we had video, most people just used it as an audio conferencing system. Mm. Um, but we had to learn and we had to make sure we had our cameras on to see each other, mm. to actually get the full effect that video would have. And I, so I think that technology leaders really had to step up and provide a lot more cultural support to the organization so that they could evolve, not just making the tech work, not just making sure VPN was up and great. Those are all table stakes, but how are we going to work? How are we going to use this technology? How are we going to collaborate? And how do we make sure that our productivity continues to rise as we go through this? I think the role of the CIO and the CTO played a really critical part just because of our histories of we've been doing this for a long time, at least I have mm -hmm. um, in my career. I, I, I've been working with globally dispersed teams for 25 years. I'm used to not having my team around me. I'm used to that. And so I think we, we had an opportunity to really lead there. Some companies during the pandemic really had to uh, uh, start reimagining not just tinkering with their business model uh, in order to survive. And that's one of the things you're hearing that IT executives are not just operators, but they're actually involved with thinking about business model changes. Has that been true for you? Absolutely. I mean, I, I view myself as a business executive that just happens to love and know a lot about technology. You know, and my, and my job is to help our uh, our company achieve its goals. And, um, you know, we're a publicly traded company. So we have goals for, to our shareholders that um, that's why we show up. You know, we're not doing tech for the sake of tech. And so thinking about self-service, thinking about APIs, thinking about developer-friendly interfaces, thinking about the right set of developer enablement materials so that developers can self-serve on their own, um, sample code, the right videos, documentation, you know, those sorts of things, while in many cases they're tech led, really are business enablers that in a digital transformation and in a world of pandemic, you know, challenges, you know, you, you want to be able to really see that self-service pick up because, you know, you're not going to be able to get everybody together and walk through it. You, you're going to need people to be able to self-serve on their own time. And especially in that, you know, new work model where people are more intermixing their personal lives and work lives, they might be working at 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be able to get the people that they normally would on the phone right then to help them. And so, We've been very thoughtful about making sure that we are kind of a developer first mindset internally and externally. 
because that's how our customers are going to consume from us. Mm -hmm. You know, if you work at a large bank and you're working on a project to integrate with us, you want to be able to do that without having to talk to us. Well, we want customers to be able to self-serve on their own very quickly with the right tools. And, and, and that's kind of a technology-led thought process around digital self-service. But it's been great to see so many of our business unit presidents now fully seeing the rewards of that. And now they're their own champions of you know, our APIs, our developer portal, um, and those types of capabilities. And that to me is the biggest reward and success is, you know, I got the flywheel going. It was my job for us to push us to think differently. I had to place some bets and make some forward investments because I knew that's where the puck was going. Yeah. But then to turn that back over and now let the business drive and use it on their own, that flywheel will now never stop, right? That, that's a new Equifax. And, and that really kind of, to me, sums up my job is to help build the new Equifax, get that flywheel going, and then get out of the way and go work on the next thing. The CIO role uh, seems to just keep expanding. Um, and in particular with new technologies, it's important that CIOs and CTOs get up to speed really quickly. But where do CIOs get the training they need to take advantage of, for example, the new normal? Uh, as a result of the pandemic or take advantage of emerging technologies like AI. You come to AI with a good deal of experience. You were in on the ground floor on enterprise AI at IBM, but many CIOs need to get up to speed. Where do they get the competency to know where they could, for example, use AI in an environment where machine learning is now integral to IT systems? Linda, that's a great question, and I, it's one I'm very passionate about. Look, I think first, uh, and this may sound crazy, but CIOs and CTOs should be highly technical. I believe that you know this is not you know just a you know one size fits all role. This is not commercial off the shelf package software implementation. You have to be technical. You have to love technology, right? I I have loved technology since I was eight years old. It's my hobby. Um, I train myself because it's fun, right? I, I code, I have my own, you know, cloud environments and instances and play around with things because I enjoy learning. I enjoy tech. And to me, it's not a job, it's a hobby. I love it. And so I think that, you know, more CIOs and CTOs need to have that background because the world's changing. Every day, there are hundreds of new capabilities released across just the top three hyperscale cloud providers, you think about the change that they're putting out. Keeping up with that, you know, that's on them. That's on you as a leader to stay current. It's on you as a leader to understand it. And I think the most important thing, when I say be technical, understand it at a binary level. Really understand from an end-to-end -end perspective, how exactly does this work? Not just kind of the high level bullet point capabilities, but understand really how it works. Um, we have to be, I think, at that level of precision today as leaders to be able to put our companies at a place that advantages them, right? The competition, you know, you know no matter what industry you're in is tough and there's startups and there's new players constantly emerging and they're pushing and pushing and pushing. And if you as a technology leader are going to differentiate and provide a real win for your company, you need to really understand it at a binary level. And you need to be thinking about how you use technology to give your company a competitive edge. And it's not about running a project or running a program. It's about really thinking through and understanding the proper use of architecture, the proper use of the data, the proper use of AI. There are many things AI are, is great at. There are many things AI is not great at. Do you understand in the world of AI, the difference between AI and machine learning and deep learning? Do you understand the different modeling characteristics of different ML models? Are you thinking about how the bets you're making today are positioning your company to take advantage of things tomorrow? I think all of those require a heavy tech background. You obviously have to be great at leading people but you really need to be a geek at heart. 